Today we'll take a look on device which allows fuel from the tanks enter into the engine. And that device is called low pressure fuel valve actuator. So let's take a look at it. First of all, let's take a look how it works. Where is fuel stored? It is stored inside of the wings and as well in the center tank, which you can see up there. Uh, from there, the fuel is sucked thanks to uh, six pumps, two for each tank. So here you have a wing tanks. Up here is a center tank pump. And over here we have a second one, that one with a connector. And on the right wing, we have the same amount of the pumps. So those are wing pumps. Once the wing pumps or the pumps are activated, it will push the fuel through the pipes all the way to here. Here, as I told you, is located a low pressure fuel valve. And once that uh, valve is open, it will let the fuel goes through the pylon and then through that pipe all the way down to high pressure fuel pump and from the high pressure fuel pump it is sent to HMU. Inside of the HMU you can find a high pressure valve which uh, is open in certain point of the startup procedure and then the fuel is pushed inside of the combustion chamber through the fuel nozzles. Of course, HMU is here to distribute the fuel to other valves like uh, BBVs or BSVs. Uh, these uh, valves are controlled or these uh, components are controlled uh, thanks to fuel, which is distributed from the HMU. So now we know position, but how it is controlled? Well, you have two possibilities. First one is the most common, and that's a master lever down here. With this, basically, pilots control the engines or they can start the engine with this lever whenever it is in a certain configuration. And this will open the low pressure shuttle valve. And after certain period of time and certain steps, which are performed by a FADEC, it will also activate the high pressure valve or open high pressure valve. And once the pilots want to switch off the engine, they will just put the master lever to off position and that will close uh, low pressure and high pressure valve and the engine will lose the supply of the fuel and from that point it is switched off. Uh, second option is uh, fire lever up here. Once you release the fire lever, it will cut all the sources which are supplied to and from the engines, which means it will cut fuel supply, it will cut uh, hydraulic supply and as well bleed air. This function is there to prevent fluids which can feed the fire to get inside of the engine. So that's the second option. Low pressure fuel valve we will find over here and uh, a connection between the pylon and wing. And yeah, this uh, valve or this actuator control uh, control all the fuel which goes inside of the engine. You can find there two motors, two independent motors, and this is because of the redundancy again. So if one fails, the other one can uh, take over. So there is always a chance to shut the fuel. We have two connectors on it. One. And the other one is above, and the whole actuator holds on one clamp, which you can't really see, but you can reach it from the uh, from the top. There is one flat screw, which I can easily remove from down here. And since there is no chance to place in camera to show you the process of removal, let's jump to the point when the valve is out. So, the valve 
is out. Or the actuator is out. This is it. And basically, yeah, this drives the valve itself, which you can see up there. Yeah, this is the valve, which is controlled by this actuator. So, yeah. Simple, simple stuff, and it holds there thanks to this clamp. That's it. Now we can install the new one. So this is the actuator, and yeah, two connectors, two motors, and as you can see, this is the part which drives the valve. And by the way, this little hole which you can see is anti-rotation point or towel that holds the actuator on exact position on the valve and it prevents rotation of the actuator and as well we need to measure this dowel on the new actuator to be sure that it will sit exactly on its position because they can have a different size of course and here is a visual indicator thanks to this we know that if the valve itself is closed or open now it's closed whenever uh, these two lines are uh, aligned then the valve is open so it's that easy and thanks to a separation of the valve and actuator uh, you can uh, quite easily replace just the actuator without uh, opening the fuel line We need to install the new one. And before we install new actuator, we of course need to remove the old O-ring and replace it with a new one. And that one need to be of course lubricated. A new O-ring on the place. Good. And again, same as removal installation is not that hard but there is space exactly for two hands and the tool so nothing to show you guys so let's jump further and whenever actuator is on position we can install both connectors one the first one is connected already yes two, two. click click I heard it. both of them in so all is good. From here I see the position of the indicator. Everything's fine. Let's see from there. Okay, as next we need to train the fuel filter and pull the plug. Because basically during test we need to know if fuel flow into the engine and we'll test each motor separately. So and to see this, the best way is to pull the plug from the fuel filter because this is direct line uh, to a low pressure valve. From low pressure valve, fuel leads directly to a fuel filter. So once we activate one of the motor, it will open the line and we'll see the fuel flow. If that happens, we know that uh, the valve works as it should. And whenever fuel will be drained, we can prepare cockpit for the test. Good. Good. So basically it should look like this, this pressurized. There should be no flow now. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, and yeah, the, like this, you will pull one CB at mm -hmm. the time. It's for different motors, eh? you are checking. Two. The valve of, I know, but uh, you are checking now that the valve opens with the two different motors. Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. So like this and yeah, we'll go. One well, the other well. One motor, I'll tell you there is fuel flow. You will, you will, you will put the master lever back. So this you do. Make sure that yeah. everything is closed. Yeah, yeah. On, off. On, 
Five there is fuel point. flow. I will check. I will check that the, the the line is line is crossed, or it is aligned, and then uh, you will re, uh, you will uh, put master lever in the off position, and then you change the CBs, mm -hmm. and we'll do it again, right? Happy? Very happy. Like. So we start with the motor. Twenty five. Engine one pulled. Engine one low pressure valve motor. To supply and control that is related. Yes. The valve, you can set the master lever on. Yes, please. Yep. It's moved. Stop, 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 stop. Perfect. That was a first motor from the actuator. So now we switch to the second one. I will drain the bucket and we'll do it again, but a bit yeah. faster. Align and close. As you can see, visually we confirmed the function of the second motor and we had indication in the cockpit, so test pass. So, as you saw, the, uh, it was a bit too much fuel for this bucket, but we don't have anything bigger, so... That's why we spill a bit of fuel out. But yeah, for that purpose, we have this sand over here and we clean it. There is nothing on the floor anymore, no fuel remaining uh, on the ground. So yeah, now we just put this in the special bin and we can start with the installation of the, uh, of the drain board on the filter. And what is actually the purpose of this test? Why we need to have a boost pumps on? The reason is quite simple. We need to be sure that actuator or the motors of the actuator can move the valve under load from the boost pumps. Whenever this is proved, we know that there will be no failure whenever pilots need to switch off the engine. And by the way, this test can give you an idea how much fuel flow inside of the engine because this drain port is really small compared to diameter of the fuel holes which lead to engine. And since leak check of the actuator pass as well, we can install the panel. And all what's remaining is to perform leak check of fuel filter drain port. And that we're gonna do with the engine Batteries filtering. On. For which we need to switch on the APU. So let's yes. take a look how to do it. Now we pull this CB, auto extinguish. Ground test, yes, that one, pull it. Make it a test. If you fire test, three seconds, one, two, three, done. Good, close the CB. Perfect, master on. Okay, here I will pause the video and explain something real quick because I get this question in the past and I want to explain it again. Between the switching of the master switch and start of the APU, you need to wait at least three seconds. The reason for this is to prevent unwanted automatic fire extinguisher discharge during the test of the APU. So with that clear we can continue. And you can hit the start. We'll wait for the doors and when it open it will you will hear the relay contact and we'll go. Yes, suck. And by the way, there is no indication because we don't need to. APU is under control of ECB, which uh, contain uh, Fuel Authority Digital Electronic Control System. And this is responsible for everything during startup or during the APU operations. Anyway, so for, for the dry crank, we'll go engine one. So those two pumps, left pumps, yes. Then we need uh, our fuel shuttle valve open. So for that, we need to pull high pressure shuttle valve, A1. Yes, okay. good. We'll switch off the packs. Now, APU bleed. And we are ready. And whenever we get approval from the colleagues from the outside, we can start with the dry crank. Beacon, please, yes. Mode selector, 
crank. Yes. Flip it to crank. Yes. Main start. Now guard, guard, guard. Lift the guard. Yes. Hit it. Push, leave it. Yes, good. Starter will open. That's enough. Kill it. Just press it. That's it. Yes. Mode selector normal. Perfect. 20% beacon off. We can kill the bleed. And we can take a look outside. But yeah, now, fuel pumps off. And the CB loads. Now let's take a look. If there is nothing, we will uh, shut down the. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very nice. We can, close. we can close the engine. Everything is fine. So if you shut down. And since there is cooling procedure or cooling period, it takes always a bit of time. We also need to remain on our batteries because from the batteries, APU uh, from the batteries APU uh, is powered when we switch it off. So. And now I need to wait two minutes uh, till uh, like till the APU brain will shut down and then we can be sure that nothing will gonna happen to the uh, APU controller. Okay guys, that's more or less all about uh, this uh, fuel actuator. If you have any questions, you know what to do, write them down in the comments below. As always, I would like to ask you to don't use this as a replacement for your maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer Big thanks to Austrian and Alliance that they let me record all these videos for you. Big thanks to each and everybody uh, for watching, and especially to members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš, this was Rekam Maintenance with Zeto, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.